Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Worst to Best. This is going to be based on the band Echolin. Echolin is a very, very good band. I've been a fan of them for about five years. Um, they are kind of a cross between Gentle Giant and Genesis, which is a really cool combination. Not a band combination that you would expect to hear on a lot of different bands, but... This is one of those bands that is very unique in their terms, in their sound, and they are uh, very, very, very good. Um, so, let's get this going. Um, so, I have all nine of them. They have only released nine as of late. Um, they are planning on releasing a tenth soon, and I think I might go ahead and do a review on it soon. But um, Let's get this started. Oh, one more note. Um, I said last time that I was going to do a yes, where's the best first, but um, this is probably the better option because I'm a little bit more well informed with Echolin, even though I love yes. Um, it just happens to be that this one is a shorter one and I can get this done quicker. So without any further ado, let's get into number nine. When the Sweet Turns Sour, released in 1996. Okay, so the big reason why this uh, why this is so low is because of the production quality. There are songs that are really good. Um, the live material found on this album is also uh, very complimenting to this recording. Um, overall, this album has been uh, noted by a few of the members to be their worst production, but I still think that they did a pretty good job at this, and it still makes for a very enjoyable listen, despite the poor production. So, number eight. Echolin, released in 1991. Okay, so Echolin ended up releasing this album in 1991. Uh, they had some material lined up, and uh, they decided to release this. But, I mean, it's a very, very good album, and it's very pleasant and very enjoyable, but um, this is a lot more naive Echolin. This is a lot more naive. Um, very pleasant. Very, It's a very pleasant Echolin, for sure. It's very Echolin sounding, but um, it is a bit more naive. It's a little bit more amateurish. Um, they almost, almost like they know where they are going with their material, but they just aren't there quite yet with this release. So let's go to number seven. The End is Beautiful, released in 2005. Okay, so this is definitely a very well recorded album. Very well recorded. It, um, it has a bunch of really good songs uh, with a bit more, with a bit of a new style. Um, I think songs like Georgia Pine, Love Sick Morning, uh, The End is Beautiful, and Misery Not Memory are all great. I do find that this album is a bit too grungy for my taste, so overall, a very solid release, but exact but not exactly my taste on some of the some of the remain the remainder of the tracks that um that just don't work for me too well. Um number six. <laughs> Suffocating the Bloom, released in 1992. Okay, this is a huge improvement over their debut for sure. It has a, it's still a bit naive, um, but it's definitely more defined. Um, and uh, again, uh, the, it's another, uh, the other issue with this is that the production is still a little bit poor. Every song on here is very well written, um, very well performed, and overall it's a very catchy and very alkaline album as well. It's just the production quality keeps it down a bit. It's a very good album overall, but it just suffers from poor production. Um, number five. My, released in 2002. One long concept piece completely prog and very well produced. Um I don't really have any real complaints about this album. Um I do love the format of this album, one long song. Just that's a great that I love that idea. Just one long song and it just goes. You know, I love that idea. Um but I really don't have any real complaint about this 
All I can say is that I just prefer the albums higher on the list. Number four. I Heard You Listening, released in 2015. Okay, so um, this album is a continuation of their return to form. After uh, The End is Beautiful, the band had a, a bit more of a grunge feel uh, on their 2005 release. So they decided to return to their original form and write this album. There are two albums with this origin with their original sound, and this one just happens to be the weaker one in my eyes. Um, so uh, number three, Echolin released in 2012. This is the first album to actually go back to their original sound. And oddly I, oddly enough, I find that this is the better of the two. I love the production, I love the orchestral ideas on this album. I just think that when it came down to what the band was trying to do with this album, returning to their original selves again, trying to be themselves, and I love, the, I love them for it. it. It just works on this one. Um, the problem is, is that I like the next two a little bit more. So, let's go ahead and get on to number two. It's too easy to be in the platform. As the World, released in 1995. Now, this is a wonderful album. A wonderful album indeed. I no most consider this to be their favorite album. And as much as I think that this album is great, I just prefer number one. And um, I think that... As an album by Echolin, this is probably their most gentle giant sounding one. And it's definitely a little bit hard to get into, but it's once you get into it, it's a fantastic album. And it just it clicks after a while. So um, let's move on to number one. Black. Cowboy Poems Free, released in 2000. Their reunion album. And uh, their reunion made for some of their most strong material. Every song on this album is total gold. Human Lottery, Texas Dust, Grey Flannel Suits, High as Pride. Every, all the four poems on this album, and everything here just works. Uh, the production on this release is really good. But holy crap, this is just a powerhouse of a release. And for me, this is their strongest. So, um, hopefully you guys agree with my list. What's your list? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, guys, I will see you next time. <laughs> That's not my outro. <laughs> I will see you guys later. Peace.